like Dave Grohl said, and I I think he's right. Like grinding and touring and being out there is still one of the best ways to reach people and get your name out there. And I I believe that. I believe that working hard, grinding, touring, touring. Because in the end, if you're a rock and roll heavy metal band, the live show is the epicenter of everything. You're listening to some of our special guests on this brand new episode of the Inner Sleeve Music Podcast. This is a bit of Hellfire by Screamer. And we're joined today on the show by Dejan of Screamer talking about their brand new record, Kingmaker, which drops on January 13th on all platforms. I'm Cassius Morris, Joe Pacheco joining me on the line as always to host the show. What's happening, Joe? I don't know, man, but like, is this old or is this new school metal? I can't tell. That has been what I've been trying to figure out ever (laughs) since popping it on. It, 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 you know, as we talked about in the interview, like you guys are going to hear, bridging the gap so seamlessly you know between those yep. you know the old school and new school metal sound it was it was cool to hear this album yeah yeah and it was cool to hear it and hear him talk about it and hear like sort of like the oh, we just recorded drums we just did this it's like it's just almost like a not there's no no-brainer but it's like it's not that complicated right it's just like we just good riffs which like power metal and just go through it you know so it was it was interesting a lot of cool uh i like his i like his opinions and his the way he thinks on a, a lot of stuff you know 100 percent dejan was an awesome guest to have here on the show and definitely a big reminder to go check out the latest record we're going to have a link down below to all of the socials for screamer that you're going to want to check out so definitely do not miss it hopping over to some music news shania twain is back in action with her new song giddy up and fans have had a tremendous reaction to this brand new single and music video. Now, Joe, it looks like Shania's on a big run. As mentioned in this article, she had an yeah. epic Coachella performance, Las Vegas residency, and now a documentary that I guess is coming up as well. Yeah, I'm actually didn't know about that. And I'm excited to check that out because I mean, like I've been following her career pretty much since uh, she blew up. Uh, and you know, I've, you know, always enjoyed her stuff, enjoyed her husband, her ex-husband, sorry, that she worked with, uh, you know, Matt Lang, which we all know from the Def Leppard and all those ACDC albums and like some great stuff. Uh, so yeah, no, did you, I played, when I first played this song, it was like instant, like classic, you know, classic Shania in the sense that like, yeah. she, has, she finds a way of like finding these really catchy uh poppy hooks and like the whole giddy up phrase it's so easy i you know i was like i'm not a country rock or even a country pop kind of fan you know but i mean this is to me just a regular almost pop song and uh i really enjoyed it man like uh, i thought it was funny the video sort of like mm, you know it's been done before kind of thing uh what did you think of it I thought it was cool. You know, this is definitely a commercial song, which is good. You know, I think I think it's when you're at the stage in your career, especially you kind of need that commercial sort of stranglehold if you're going to release a big single. And I think, you know, this could be played anywhere from, you know, Walmart to, you know, the gas station. I mean, this is a commercial song for everybody. So I think it's good. I also could maybe smell a TikTok challenge coming down the pipe because, uh, you know, I I feel like they, they have that name recognition and brand recognition. Uh, you know, giddy up is a term everybody really knows. So I, I exactly. think sky's the limit with the marketing. Yeah, I, uh, good point on the TikTok. I didn't even think of that, but I, yeah, I'm pretty sure something's coming down the way down the pipe. Uh, a funny thing is, like, it, as catchy as it is, it's good, no issues. I love it. Uh, it's just like it's still yet not as iconic. Maybe the TikTok stuff will make like the meme stuff, whereas like her last massive, massive hit was like, man, I feel like a woman. You know, that was sort of like what you know, like so right. maybe. TikTok will uh, definitely do something in terms of giddy up, you know, that we're going to 20 years later still be talking about it, you know? Yeah, it would definitely be cool to see. So let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the new Shania Twain takeover. It looks like she has an album dropping as well on the 3rd of February called Queen of Me. Uh, so you never know. Maybe this is comeback season for Shania. Maybe it's going to start looking more like the early 2000s again and the radio landscape. Yeah, and there's one thing, thank you, you just reminded me, the one thing I really appreciate about this song is that it was a song written, like a new song, no choruses borrowed from someone else, because yes. it was catchy, you know, it was all new. Not, you know, extremely original in terms of like, you know, we've heard those progressions before, that kind of stuff, but I mean, everything else, you know, so it's like, 
I don't know. Like, I didn't go into the details. Like, maybe there's not 15 writers on this song. There's probably two or three, you know, whereas some of these other songs have 15 writers. And, like, it's it's kind of ridiculous, you know? Half but, the industry uh, on one song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, I'm glad she's back, man. I'm glad, like, you know, she probably never left, right, kind of thing. But, you know, she kind of did. Yeah. Don't I mean, call it a comeback. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, Vegas residency. I mean, like, you know, she's going to be here for a while. Hopping over to some rock news, the Neil Peart tribute concert was held on January 7th this past weekend and graced with some very special guests. The event was graced with an appearance from Why Why Not, of course, the YYZ uh, Play On Words tribute band featuring Mike Portnoy, Frank Bello, and Jason Bittner. Now, this was cool, Joe, because I don't know if people necessarily expected a full-on tribute performance uh, from these guys, per se. I mean, obviously, there was a lot of bands on the bill, but, you know, I, I'm not sure if people were, were expecting this. Yeah, that would have been an awesome surprise. I'm not surprised Portnoy, Mike Portnoy, because we all know he's a longtime Rush and Neil Peart fanatic. fanatic. <laughs> Uh, so am I in the sense of like, uh, it's one of the, you know, the first drummers I ever like, what, you know, like really freaked out. Cause I love drums. I wanted to play drums as a kid, but you know, living in an apartment, ain't going to have drums. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So this was at the Bubba Bash 2023, uh, in celebration of obviously Neil's passing January 7th, 2020. Wow. I can't believe it's been three years already, but, um, I know. It was unexpected. I felt like as well at the, at the time when he passed, it, you know, it's not oh. like we, we could have seen it coming. You know, like, I, you know, we lost Prince. We lost a couple of people, you know, big hitters like David Bowie and stuff. And those always hurt. But for me personally, like, I think it was the first one that really hit me hard. And then Van Halen, you know, uh, sort of yeah. hit me just as hard. Um, but, yeah, no, um, this is great. I watched some of these clips from the show. You know, my favorite being uh, La Villa Strangiato because it's probably my favorite Rush song. It's hard to pick one. But if I had so to... Hard. I would pick that one because it's instrumental. I've always loved it. And it's, it's funny because that riff is always the one I play when I pick up a guitar. It's one of the first riffs I always play. So you just it, go straight to that. Yeah, yeah. I just go straight to that. And uh, no, it was uh, really cool, man. Like, I, w- I would have loved to have been at this 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 show. Yeah, honestly, it, it really looked like it was cool. And proceeds from the show uh, were given to benefit the Cedar sinai Hospital in memory of Neil. So I guess that was may have been his charity of choice. Uh, and you know, again, definitely an icon that will be sorely missed. And it's good to see people who are going to continue to carry the torch for rock and roll, continue to bring up his name and, you know, not let him be forgotten. You know, like this is like the only time at this point, you're going to get to see rush again, the next best thing without seeing them because they're not going to play again, they're done. And which is why I have, besides the career that they had, the longevity that they had, the music that they put out that inspired me and millions and millions of other people across the planet. Um, It's like, I have such respect for them, man, because when he had some hardships back in the nineties, I think his wife and daughter, I think died within the same year, they took a break. He went, you know, cross country riding on his motorcycle and then came back. They had, I don't know how many more years together, another 20 or so. And then, this, you know, so like I have such respect for this band because like it's not someone you could have get another drum. You can got could have gotten Portnoy, which obviously in the, in uh, some of these interviews when he passed, uh, Portnoy was asked, you know, uh, and you, as you read right here, and I love his response. I love his response because he goes, "Of course, that would be a dream to play with those guys," and because Blabbermouth asked him, he says, "I don't want to see a Blabbermouth headline right now." Me thinking I deserve the gig. I'm not saying that. <laughs> He's asking me a question hypothetically, of course. Uh, if the dream, it would be a dream come true. So I love that. That made me laugh when I read that, you know, because that's like, hilarious. The guy will say two words and that's it. It's an article, you know, it's like, exactly. Uh, so I found that was hilarious. Um, or no, making a run for the, for the rush spot. You know what I mean? Like it, it becomes yeah. a song. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I like, I, I love drums and stuff you know, and there's many drummers, but I mean, he's the first one that would come to mind for me personally, like as being, yeah, it's kind of like Zach with Pantera, right? Like he was basically the first, yeah. you know, person that people were thinking of. Yeah. Were you um like, you know, I don't know, like like was Rush in your years of listening to rock, 
And being a Canadian, you know, obviously you can't get yeah. away from them. Uh, were you into them? Like, I'm curious. Absolutely. I went, I went through a big phase, I think like 2015, 16, I was really, really into Rush and I had like some posters and I ended up going to see them on their final tour. We, we did the three hour drive to Calgary to go see them. And wow. Yeah. So at that time I was really into it and I got to see Neil and, uh, you know, see the guys and it was incredible. You know, it, it was really, uh, I think a good piece of Canadiana, like my, my parents, you know, telling me about being in high school, you know, hearing about all the rush stuff. So yeah, as a Canadian, like you said, it's, it's kind of hard not to. I know. I, I, I think there's two people, right? There's people that love rush and there's people that hate rush. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think there's much. a middle, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I've never run They're into a very polarizing that, band. Yeah. And obviously a lot of people's the vocals that really turned them off and stuff and whatever. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know, I, I was like, you know, hook, line and sinker from the first, I remember getting my first 45. Uh, my mom was, uh, she used to clean uh, um, a, a record, a radio station, you know? So it's like, they would get all these promo albums, but they were like, a, I guess a, maybe a regular top 40 station. They didn't play that stuff. So all that stuff would end up in the garbage. And my mom went wow. there. Whenever she would see vinyls, she'd bring them home in like a big garbage bag. So he'd have me and my brother like waiting till 11 o'clock at night till she got home <laughs> on a school night. It didn't matter. We got it. And as soon as she would bring that garbage bag, would rip it open and I'd be like, <gasps> Rush, Ozzy. And then That's like so a bunch cool. of stuff I didn't know. So I would, you know, listen to it. If I didn't like it, it would go. But I mean... I got distant early warning uh, from the Grace uh, Grace Under Pressure album, and that was the, mm. my first exposure, I think, to Rush, you know, and a uh, little 45. That's huge. I, I loved it, you know? And you'd always get, like, a solid song, too, because, you know, you'd, you'd get, like, single. something that was close to a hit, exactly. So, so yeah, you know, you'd the, be getting a good sample. Oh, dude, I learned so much from that. Like, I got, like, we're talking about, like, early 80s, right? So I got, like, the Cindy Loppers. I even got, like, I was telling you, I got Quiet Riot, you know? Like, so wow. I got... You know, uh, I didn't get Def Leppards and stuff like that, but I mean, like, I got, like, you know, some of the stuff, you know, like Quiet Riot. Big stuff at the time. I got Bark at the Moon, the single, you know, like when it came out. I probably still have it. I'd have to go check on my mom's. I'm <laughs> That's sure. awesome. My, my, I have a bunch of stuff down there, so I'm sure, like, uh, those albums are still there, or those singles, at least. Let us know in the comments what you think of the Rush tribute. Now it's time to hop over to the Sound Mojo community tab. Of course, this is the spot on our YouTube channel, which we hope you're subscribed to already, where we ask you guys questions, put up polls, verses, and all sorts of different engaging content to hear what you guys are loving about music day by day. And today is no exception. Here we asked who dropped the best album of 2022. And whoever that guy's listening to, I'll have a copy of that album because he's having a good time. Uh, let's see what we had, Joe. So number one, it looks like the Quadraholics. Yeah, I, lo I love this name, Heady Mercury. Hmm, love that. Mm. I love when people <laughs> change one letter in a name. There's even an, a couple of artists like that, Electronica called one is called Calm Trues instead of Tom Cruise. Interesting. You know, like, oh, Calm Trues, like nice. I love that stuff. <laughs> I, I always love that. I, I'm always trying to think of it. Alice in Wonderland, A L I S O N. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I always I love that stuff when people just do a play on the word. Yeah. yeah so Heady Mercury, the Quadraholics. I was really happy to see this because it's obviously we we have them on Sound Mojo, so this is really cool. Um, AUR, happy 2023 to everybody. AUR as well. Yes. Uh, Set the Sky by Sentiment. Sentiment. So hmm. I don't know which one is the artist. I don't know if it's Set the Sky is the artist or Sentiment. I'm assuming Set the Sky is the artist. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it's hard to say, but we'll definitely give that a, a Google. So shout out to AUR. Yeah. Jason Harris, JID in uh, JID. Africa. Now, the, the, I actually didn't hear the JID album this year, but uh, I heard it was one of the better rap albums of 2022. So I have to probably check that out. I don't know if you got the chance, Joe, but definitely maybe we should put it on our list. Definitely going to check that out. If you say so, I will. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even familiar with the JID. Like, I'm. Yeah, he, he's been a rapper that's been growing a buzz for sure. Uh, and he's he's been coming up sort of under J. Cole and sort of under that crew. So, yeah, he's, he's been growing a, a big buzz. Okay. Uh, and then we have here Black Mice, Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey. Now, Steve Lacey, this was his breakout year. If you look up the single Bad Habits, if anybody uses TikTok, oh. you've definitely heard it, right? I know uh, the song is from radio, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean... I, I wasn't overly blown away with this album, Joe, but I can understand why people would like it. So I, it makes sense to well, see this here. I'll admit that like that song is a good song. Like I like yeah. everything about that song. I don't turn, I don't skip station when I hear it basically. Yeah. It's a fine um, song. 
Yeah, and then we have not Donald Fagan. Welcome back. Uh, Nos and Kendrick are two that definitely immediately come to mind. Yes. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've talked about Kendrick on yeah. this show, how I'm not crazy about his stuff just because it's really heavy and it's a it's a it takes work to listen to him. So there's a time and a place. <laughs> but uh, that being said, I mean, that means that there's a lot to the album. So I think you yeah, know, he definitely like had the, one of the better ones. It's a heady album. You got to think, right? Yeah. It's not just, yeah, I like that. That's why I appreciate that. No doubt. But I mean, like Tyler, the creator was saying when he talked about it, he felt like a lot of people, it was too direct, too pointed at, at society and too real. So I would agree with that, you know? Yeah. Maybe something. we need to, maybe we need like a couple of years to digest it and then it'll be like, ah, that makes sense. You know? Uh, yeah. We're kind yeah. of still, still rebounding. Uh, Taylor Swift with the Midnight's album. That was Melissa Worth. Yeah. Um, I actually still haven't heard this album, Joe. Same here. I still have. There's just too many albums to listen to, man. Yeah, I mean, Taylor Swift, like, I never think to listen to her just because she's not really on my playlist. But, I mean, I'm open to anything. And I'm I'm sure if an album has that big of a hype, there's got to be at least a couple songs on it I could get into. Well, you know, like, I, I don't think, like, Taylor Swift, I don't think, like, she, she's just going to always put out consistently good material, I think. You know, like, I may not be her cup of tea. Uh, one song may be better than the other. But, I mean, it's always a, always a good album for sure. Here, no doubt. Uh, this is a tough question. I know. Uh, my personal best album is I love is I love from G Idol, but the general best, uh, but the general best album can't answer for that one. So I love from G Idol. You familiar? Okay, I don't know that. I don't know the album or the artist. Actually, I'm not so surprised because it's here who suggested it. So. Yeah, so he here always has some some mystery stuff for us to go yeah. to. Definitely gonna check that out. Uh, Game X Simmons. I don't know, man. Like I said on the last one, yeah, exactly. I really like the Wombats. Uh, don't trip by Aquaculture. Is that it? Yeah, Aquaculture was good too. See, interesting. I love these, I love these suggestions because I don't know them, you know, so many new things. <laughs> and Modern War Gaming, Taylor Swift. So we had two for Taylor Swift. Definitely um, a big release this year. Oh, yeah. I don't know. When isn't it a big release? Yeah, you know? that's true. I she bet you if she blows her nose, you're going to get a headline somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I uh, had already answered my uh, four days ago here when uh, we initially asked this, but like Royxop, which I think that's how you pronounce it, Royxop, Royxop. I mentioned them on the, being a fan of them on the, a couple of weeks back on the show. They dropped three albums this year, full albums, not like wow. six songs we're talking about like 12 songs and then some but i think they had taken a hiatus for a while so maybe you know all this stuff has been working and then they just decided to release three albums throughout the year i love it like you know i thought about it the other day when we, we often ask in interviews or we ask people or even on the community tab we'll ask what are you excited for what shows are you excited for to for 2023 or whatever what concerts are you excited to attend and me being already old as I am, I'm like not very excited to see much, you know, to be honest. Like, I'm not excited to see the Metallica. I'm not excited to whatever. Like, it doesn't get me, you know, I'm sure if I'm there, I'm going to love it. I know. But I, I'd love to see these guys, Royxop. Like, I haven't seen them ever. And I, I'm like, I'm excited. If I see that they're coming to Montreal or somewhere near Montreal, I am running there. <laughs> and I haven't been that excited cool. in a long time to see anybody. So that's how much I really enjoy what these guys did on these three albums. Like, I mean, it just, it felt like, it felt like, cause you know how they release the trickle release stuff on, uh, on um, Spotify. Right. So you'll get a, a single, then you get the Friday, the next Friday is the next single. And then yeah. eventually the album will drop. Well, eventually man, just, <laughs> these guys were just like in 2022 for me, they just never stopped giving. It just kept being single, 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 single album, single, 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 single album, remix, That's remix, insane. remix. And it was just like, wow. Every Friday was just like, Oh, what's new for the gift Roy? that keeps on giving. Exactly. So, yeah, no, I really appreciate I love that. that. I, I'm definitely going to have these guys on my list. You know, for me, my favorite album of this year, I got to give it to the usual suspects, 21 Savage and Drake. The, these boys okay. came in and listen, I think I've mentioned this, that like, you know, a lot of people like Drake's poppy singing, singing stuff. And that's great, but that's not what I listen to him for. I listen to him for just straight up rap. And finally, Joe, we got an album where he just came out and he just rapped through the whole album. So I think this was the one that like the fans like me of his were waiting for. So that's why I give it the edge. Do I understand why a lot of people wouldn't say that? Yes, I do. 
So <laughs> I feel like it's a lot less mainstream, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, yeah, I, I could totally feel it from even like when a band releases something that's more commercial so they can get more sales or when they do a real like like album that, you know, they're known for. So that the I, fans I, are waiting for. Yeah. Exactly. I get that 100 percent. Yeah. So if you didn't let get to let us know in this community tab post, uh, let us know in the comments right here of this video who dropped the best album of 2022. We're still very much curious to see and hear your thoughts and make sure to hit that subscribe as well for future posts on the community tab. Now it's time to hop into our interview segment of today's show. It was a pleasure to be joined by Dejan of Screamer, and it was awesome to have him on the program to speak about the brand new record Kingmaker, which is going to drop on January 13th. On top of that, we really got down to brass tacks when it came to mixing, production, different production techniques. And for anybody who's curious, especially about capturing that classic sound through today's means of modern technology, I think this is really going to be a treat for you guys to watch. Yeah, I love how he, he says, uh, and it's true. I, I like, you know, 20 years ago when I started recording and stuff, everybody wanted that analog, that analog, recording to tape, recording to tape. And then he just says like, eh, we've done it. And I think it's just more about the vibe instead of actual any benefits, you know? So that those are the kind of like straight up answers you're going to get. No nonsense, no marketing bull crap. You know, it's like, no, no, man, you know, we had access to it and it's like, it's cool, but it's not a deal breaker basically, you know? Couldn't have said it better myself. We're going to hop into the interview portion with Dejan. We'll catch you guys right afterwards. So the brand new record is going to be dropping on January 13th, Kingmaker. Uh, you know, one of the things I notice about the record is it's it's such a classic metal sound i mean it really retains some of that sort of 90s even 80s sort of classic sound that we all love i'm just sort of curious how, how did you guys capture this sound in the studio with the modern equipment and like how exactly was this recorded because it, it really does retain the the true metal form uh the dr drums we recorded in gothenburg with a guy called uh, herman uh, jacob herman uh, he works at Top Floor Studios, and he's worked with guys like In Flames, Europe, and Tracks. So he's a very experienced guy. So the drums were actually recorded like very roomy sound, like no, no, not a lot of editing. So it's a very natural, organic drum sound. And for and for the rest, like the guitars, we recorded in our own studio. So I engineered it. So basically, I've used the same amp I've used for the last two records. It's an 80s Marshall very loud yeah i would imagine it could blow yeah. your ears out right i mean that's how heavy is that yeah. to is it like an eight piece stack no i just usually usually i just use one of my orange cabs because i okay. think they sound the best and then then we, we don't do overdubs in this band like on the guitar so we 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 i think we use at least four mics so so the sound becomes bigger than it actually is. But I think in this case, when we did these guitar recordings, I think the room mic we used made all the difference. So stuff stuff like that. And then when we mixed the album, I, I told the guy, I want it to sound like 1984, but one leg in 1984 and one leg in like today. Yeah. So, because I think you guys know, nailed that on the head when you made this record. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, the classic stuff you tell mixing engineers, make it sound big. <laughs> yeah, 100%, so, right? I mean, yeah. which bands were you really listening to and looking at, uh, or, or was it just something in your head that you had for yourself? No, the guy who mixed the album, he's uh, called, um, what the fuck is it, Henrik Ud. And I've known that guy for 10 years now. He worked with a band from Canada called Striker, if you know who they yes. are. Yes. We, we toured with them in 2013, and they, they were actually recording an album at Studio Fredman in Gothenburg, the Gothenburg okay. Sound Studio. And that guy was engineering and mixing the album, so I got to know him. And this time around, we actually had the budget to work with him, since he works with, like, he worked with Bring Made Horizon when they broke and In Flames and all those big bands. So I, I always liked his mixing style because he everything sounds very modern but still big huge and like natural so i think he sent us like one mix and he's like what do you think guys i was like yeah yeah great let's go. let's just do your job so in terms of the actual like 
setting and, and recording that he's using? Are you guys using classic recording techniques or are you guys mostly using digital like Pro Tools? How exactly is that part going together? The drums were recorded probably in Logic or Pro Tools or something. Okay. But yeah, we use, the, we use the digital. I don't know. I've, I've tried the analog. I don't think it really sounds any different. I think hmm. the, at least at least for me, I think digital sounds as good as analog. I think it's more when you do analog, it's more you're catching you're you're doing it for more the vibe than the but today the technology is so advanced you can basically you can sit at home and record. You can just use stuff like this and just record at home. And so, recreate it. Yeah. So but yeah. Usually when we're in the studio, we like to mic up and use the real tube amps and we record digitally because our studio is built that way. So, so yeah, I don't know. I don't have really a preference. If we, if everybody said, okay, let's do it analog, we would done it analog, but since it's convenient, it's easy. Would you say that that's going to be the way that it continues to go? Because there's a lot of studio purists who say, you know, you have to go to a studio and do it the class, you know, an analog purist would say that. Uh, but, you know, it seems like more and more people are just doing it either in their own studios or even just at home. I think that it, it depends. Like the last album we did, we went to a studio. They had all the gear you can imagine from analog to digital. And I, all so we used all analog gear, but we recorded digitally through a very nice mixing desk. And we lived in the studio for a week. So yeah, it depends on the on what's the budget, what's the time. That's of course, if we had a million dollars to record an album, we will probably rent a studio somewhere nice in the countryside in England and live there for two months and record. Of course, we will do that. But if the yeah, I think it all depends on budgets. A hundred percent. You know, speaking on production, one of the big things people have mentioned is the potential of AI uh, creeping into production more and more, artificial intelligence. I'm curious if you, you know, as a creator of music, would welcome that and what your thoughts are on that whole concept. I think, I think me and the other guitar player, actually, he told me about the AI stuff. Uh, I don't really know. I think m maybe... Come, maybe they can, it can create like a three thirty minute pop song that maybe, but I don't know. I think whatever you're making, if it's art or music, I think the human touch is what makes it special. So yeah, and like and like when you do a recording, if there's like a guitar or a drum that's like lacking behind or it's a bit imperfect, I don't think an AI can create like grooving like stuff like that. I, think, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a specialist in AI, but, but it I seems unlikely the human, that they could, cause it's, it's such a human thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's that. Like how, how does a computer give you emotions? If you listen to like music, that's very melancholic or very happy. How, how, how is an AI gonna project those types of things, you know? Exactly. I don't. I don't, th I don't think. I don't think an AI could do typo negative. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? It's <laughs> it's definitely it, it's almost impossible. It was actually the anniversary yeah. of of this the singers passing of that group yesterday, yeah. I believe. Pardon me for. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not very familiar yeah. with them, but did you have any thoughts on that, or and were, were you big into the group? I, 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 I'm never really. Go I've I've had there's one album I've listened to, so I I actually listened to like a song the other day. I nice. found this like 90, 90s playlist on Spotify, like metal 90s. I was like, what could this be? And there was actually a typo negative song on there. So I, I gave that a spin. But yeah, they, they were a great band. I've, I've seen a lot of live clips on them. I've never seen them live, unfortunately. But I have one record in my shelf on vinyl that I really like. So yeah, they're a cool band. I should. I, it's always with some groups, you never really have the time. There's so much music. One day I will get into it even more. You know, speaking of vinyl, you guys have the new record, uh, Kingmaker, which is going to be dropping in a vinyl edition. And I noticed you guys had a, a like a digipack 
I'm just curious, uh, which one do you think is going to perform the best in 2023, given the vinyl resurgence? Because it seems like vinyl has become so much more popular and continued to trend upwards as well. Yeah, I think the vinyl is going to do really well. I've noticed in our web store, the vinyl is flying off the shelf. So that's positive. For me, I, I do collect vinyl. I love listening to vinyl at home. But for me, as long as people listen to our music, I'm happy. Yeah. Of course, of course, in some countries, like CD is still very popular. And of course, people are going to kill me for this, but CD does sound better than vinyl because you can store more information on a CD than a vinyl. That is a controversial but, statement, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, the album is ma mastered one way for digital and one way for vinyl. So it's it's adapted for the format it's supposed to be played in. So I think... Hmm. Whichever media you listen to it is going to sound good. Is that typically the way that it's done, do you know? Like, do they usually adapt it to vinyl, or is that not normal? Like, is that something you guys did? We've done it, I think, always, I think. I think, I think that is a thing you do, because it has okay. to be, do something with uh, how a vinyl record plays and how a CD or digital plays. I think there, there's a thing there. I, Somebody has explained it to me once, but it was so much uh, stuff I didn't really understand. So, but there is a reason for doing that because the vinyl, the, the something with I don't really know. But yeah, there is a reason why. So usually everybody do does a master for vinyl, then one for digital and CD. And you were saying you prefer CD. Is that your favorite way to consume music, or do you stream a lot? At home, I mainly listen to vinyl. I have nowhere to plug my uh, streaming thing in. Like okay. maybe through the TV, but the sound is shit. So yeah, mainly, mainly, mainly at home it's vinyl. But when I'm out and out and about, it's uh, I use Spotify. So and who would you say you know in terms of some of the classic bands? Because we're seeing a lot of these classic metal bands. We were talking about the '80s sound. They're going on you know big victory lap tours or farewell tours. Who do you think is has been the most interesting in in recent years? I think I would say Judas Priest. Okay, yeah. KK Downing if you, Reunion. If you, if, I don't know. I, I actually like the Richie Faulkner. I think he does mm. the, everything justice. Uh, he plays the right way. He's not trying to. He's not trying to be something else. He's doing it the Judas Priest way. And actually, the latest album they put out, Firepower, was actually quite good. I didn't really like the two latest Iron Maiden albums. I think. I don't. I don't know. We went to see Maiden in Chicago this fall when we were over in the states. So it's always fun to see Iron Maiden. They put on a hello show, but yeah. yeah, I think Judas Priest, like album album wise, I think Judas Priest, like they, they put out a solid record. And also, uh, if you know about that old new wave tradition of Mad Satan, they put out like two records in a row now that are fucking awesome. And we toured oh, nice. with them in 28, 2018. They put out an album called Crew Magic, and that album is I've listened to that to that a lot. It's really really good. I gotta check so, that out. Yeah, that'd be very. So I cool. think Ju Ju Judas Priest. I think their the latest things they've been doing. I think it's really really good. What about uh, new bands? You mentioned Satan. Is there any other new bands that you think people should check out? Because I know there's so much hunger for you know awesome new rock and metal. I would say the coolest band uh, I saw last year are uh, Onto Others. Okay. I think they have a, they have a good thing going. So big ups to them. I really enjoyed the latest record from uh, Summerlands, new band, and all the bands we toured with last year, Hellfire from San Francisco, uh, Haunt, really good, Trevor's doing a great job there, Night Demon's always good. So I hope Enforcer. everybody's taking notes out there, because this yeah, is all stuff I'm going to be looking up later. <laughs> yeah, there, there are so many good bands in like in the genre we're, we're doing, so I think... The future is bright for heavy metal. D. Snyder said actually recently on this show that there's a lot of great bands out there, but they're just not being promoted. Is do you think that there's any truth to, to that statement? I think so. I think I think he's very very correct in that assessment. Mostly because I think if you look at festivals, of course they're going to book all the legends and stuff like that because you know they have to make money for the festival to run around. And I don't know. If, if music has been like a safe bet, like let's just put all our efforts in what's 
what's safe. But if you, at the same time, if you look like Ghost, they came from nowhere and huge. There's a Swedish band called Sabaton. Do you know about them? Yeah, I've seen them a couple times actually. They're they're a yeah. powerhouse. Yeah, not my not my favorite uh, type of music, but the way they have built the band and the way they've worked, like more like entrepreneurs. Yeah. In, in in a business that is hard to start with with all the all the bands if you see like every friday it feels like there's five million new songs dropping on the streaming platforms music videos everything and people's attention span is shorter and yeah but like dave like dave Grohl said and i i think he's right like grinding and touring and being out there is still one of the best ways to reach people and get your name out there and i i believe that i believe that working hard grinding touring touring because in the end if you're a rock and roll heavy metal band the live show is the epicenter of everything at least what i think yeah no a thousand percent uh i'm curious did you get to see the rolling stone top 200 greatest singers list at all no okay well there's been a lot of outcry about this because there was a lot of iconic singers especially in metal that were snubbed there was virtually no metal singers featured gene simmons has come out and said it's a crime that ozzy osbourne wasn't featured on this list um just curious if you sort of had any thoughts on that because it's a it's a very common tradition of metal being quote-unquote snubbed in lists like this but uh <laughs> isn't rolling stone magazine a pop magazine nowadays right snubbed. pretty it's, i would say so i mean <laughs> every time there's a rolling stone list i just click buy it because it's it's not about hard rock metal, rock and roll music. That's true. So, I mean, you know, why listen to their opinion if they're not necessarily, you know, straight from the source? Yeah, I don't know. For me, Ronnie James Dio is the number one heavy metal rock singer of all time. So I don't need a list. Do you think that these award shows and ranking sort of styles are, are going to go out of style? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care that much about stuff like that even though it's always nice to be praised and like people but i think when it comes to the nitty-gritty of it like having a fan base touring selling albums and like growing your fan base and being connected to that that is the true true honor in it all you know for at least from my perspective I love that answer. Real quick before we wrap up, uh, Watch Mojo made a list of the top 10 most iconic music festivals of all time. Of course, at number one, we had Woodstock. Um, just curious, what's your favorite music festival, either that you've attended or that you've played? There is a small heavy metal underground festival, uh, like 40 minutes from where I live. It's called Muscle Rock, Muscle Rock. Okay. And we go there every year, and I always have a good time there. And there's actually a super cool festival in Houston called Hell's Heroes. Okay, interesting. And, and that's the closest you're going to get to a European-type festival in the States. And it's like all cool underground heavy metal bands and new bands. Like it's, And we played there this year, and it was amazing. Christian, who puts the festival up, does an amazing job. So Hell's Heroes, if you love heavy metal, that's the festival to check out. Awesome. You guys heard it here first. The brand new record drops on January 13th. Dejan, I really appreciate you taking the time today and uh, keep making the awesome music, man. We're going to be listening. We will. Thank you, man. We want to give a huge shout out to Dejan and the guys over at Screamer for joining us on today's episode of the Inner Sleeve Music Podcast. It was a pleasure to get to hear the inside of the operation, not only the production techniques, not only the mixing and songwriting, but everything down to their vinyl packaging. I mean, look, I mean, they're very methodical about the way they put together their vinyls. They take, you know, one of the approaches, which I understand is maybe more popular, Joe, where they they you know have a certain way to put it on the actual piece of vinyl oh yeah you, you was talking about the mastering for digital and uh, and mastering for vinyl it's interesting because like i've seen this come up so many more times so many times in the past even at the time it was like mastering you know mastered for itunes which i didn't understand because i figured people are like smaller earbuds or whatever yeah. it may be uh but i can maybe picture mastering for vinyl being different i don't know like i didn't do 
a ton of research, but I just knowing from what I know uh, is like, you know, I think it's more of a low end issue. Like if there was too much bass and stuff like that, the needle used to pop, it used to jump off the record if it was too much low end, which is why a lot of those old records from the seventies or the sixties or earlier were very thin sounding in the sense of not enough low end, not enough bass because one, the needle couldn't hold it. And probably the speakers back in the day as well. Take uh, it. It. But I'm pretty sure because, you know, the whole process, the way it's cut, you know, you don't want the needle bouncing. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent exactly sure why this is probably the case, but uh, it was definitely cool to talk about. Yeah. It's cool to hear the inside of, you know, how all these things work. You know, we're, we're so used to just going on Spotify and streaming or going down to the record store and buying the record, yeah. but there's so much that goes into this. So it's always cool to hear about that process. Make sure to go check out the brand new record Kingmaker available everywhere on January 13th. And of course, if you want to follow screamer, we have all the links you're going to need down below in the description right here on sound mojo. Thank you for tuning into episode 106 of the inner sleeve music podcast. It's been a pleasure to give you guys the show again this week and make sure to go follow us on all social platforms at sound mojo. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hit that subscribe button as well on the YouTube page and make sure to come weigh in on the community tab for all the different questions and polls that we're asking. Also, make sure to hit the merch shop. We have a link down below for all different Sound Mojo merchandise. We look forward to seeing you guys repping our merch and make sure to send us a photo. We'll post it up on our socials. Thank you so much for checking in. We'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>